Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this magic card. You start off with a black and white picture, pull the top up and it changes like magic. It's a great thing for the children um, and it's a lovely little stocking filler too. Um, with three days left to go for Christmas, um, just about time to make some. Right, to start off with, I'm going to tell you the cardstock we need. And they are, first of all, a card base, as normal, which measures um, eight and a quarter by five and three quarters, scored at four and one eighth. Um, that was the wrong one, this is the right one. And a piece of Whisper White cardstock that is eight inches by five inches another piece of Whisper White which is four inches by three, some of our window sheet um, which is uh, very uh, good quality acetate and that measures four inches by three inches. You want a scrap of Pear Pizzazz and you need a piece of our Dazzling Diamonds Glimmer Paper which measures um, three and three quarter inches by three and something or other. What's that? That's uh, three and a quarter. Oh, three and three quarters by three and a quarter. Okay, um, I'm going to have to keep referring to my notes with this one because there are so many parts to it. Um, we're going to start off with doing the um, elf and with your Whisper White piece and your acetate they should be exactly the same size. You'll need your um, Stamp-a-Majig for this one and that is, I have my sheet here and my tool here. Um, the stamp set that I'm using is the Christmas Cuties which is this one here that I'm going to be using. There are two others that you could choose from. Um, so first of all, I'm going to stamp my image using Memento ink on the cardstock, which is here. And I need this to be about three quarters of an inch down which is what, six, uh, three squares. Okay, so I want the top of his hat to come about there. So ink him up. Now I didn't uh, put him in the center, did I? Did I use that? No, yeah, I might have done actually. I might have put that there. Not that I think it really matters. Um, so I used this. Let's try it anyway. Let's ink that up again while I've been dithering. I've watched so many videos of how to make this and I've taken bits and pieces from each of them until I've got one that I've really liked. Now what I need to do for the acetate is pop that on the top, line it up perfectly, and then pop this on top so that that lines up. Then once that's in place, pop my stamp of magic tool back and then with the stays on which I don't know whether I should be um, washing it in between or not but all I've been doing is just stamping the image off um, it doesn't seem to be doing any harm okay so I'm changing from memento to stays on and this is probably the most difficult part of this project and the reason is because it's so easy to slide your stamp 
when you're on the acetate. So be very, very careful as you put your block down, just keep it in that one position. It's very, very tempting to move the stamp and magic tool out of the way. It's also very tempting to move your hand to press on different parts of the stamp. But resist them both and you should be fine. Okay, let's see if that marries up again. There we go. The eyes are slightly out. Let's get that back. And the legs. Now it doesn't matter if it's a little bit out because we'll we have a little bit of manoeuvring room afterwards. There we go. That matches all right. This is slightly crooked in comparison, but it's not a problem. Okay, so the next job is to paint this. Well, obviously, to get this painted, it's going to be quite a time-consuming job. So I've already done it. Um, that was why I was using a stamp and a jig because if I'd used it on there, then I knew that this would be lining up okay. Yes, that's fine, that lines up. I've got a little gap at the top there, but that doesn't matter either. Okay, so the colours that I've used here, for the red, I've used real red, and this is all with our markers. And Pear Pizzazz, that I think was soft suede, yes. The hair is soft suede, and the bells are crushed, crushed curry. The face, I've used Blush Blossom, which is a retired um, marker pen. Um, since I've been a demonstrator, um, Stamping Up did bring it out of retirement and sold it as a one-off um, for a year. And I bought two then, and I'm really pleased that I did. So if they ever do that again, if you don't have one, do try and get hold of one. Right, so the next thing that I need to do is done that, done that, done that, cut the tabs on the image sheet and acetate. Right, okay. Now, I need, this is going to go inside here once this is folded and as I pull it up, I need little stoppers on the end here. So I'm going to cut those using my um, trimmer. It's not something that I use very often. Let's pop that over there. Right, okay, so what I need to do is, um, let me just check my measurements before I tell you, um, a quarter of it, right, that's right, okay, so now this piece here, this side, I've got to measure it up at either half an, that's clever isn't it, you can't see it, it's come down a bit, you've got to measure it up either at the half inch, uh, no, that's quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch, or I think that's about uh, 0.7 of a centimetre. That's one, two, three, four, 0.6 of a centimetre. Okay, so what you need to do is bring cutting blade down to number nine, because you don't want to cut all the way, and then just cut upwards. Okay, so that should still be attached. Turn it over and do exactly the same on the other side. Up to a quarter of an inch, bring your blade down to number nine, and then slice upwards. Okay. And then all you need to do to those two little bits is to just snip them off. like that. Okay, and that's what's going to stop the um, image coming right out of our card. So what you need to do now is if you place your image on top so it lines up, holding it so it stays like that, just trim off the excess of the um, acetate and it's certainly worth keeping these little bits because if you make um, 
box cards. You know the cards where the flowers are all popping out the top? Um, those are absolutely excellent. They're really, really ideal. And it's great because they were, as for now, um, scraps, rubbish. Okay, so that's that bit. Now I'm going to use a little bit of temporary adhesive just up here. Um, this is not a stamping up product. If you have snail, um, you can just put a little dab down and just keep putting your finger on it to take away a lot of the stickiness. Alright, so line, keeping this bit up, line your image up again and then as soon as you're happy it's lined up perfectly then let that bit down let it stick okay we now need a one inch circle of our pepsas fold that in half and I tend to give mine a little bit of a curl first just helps to fold it over without too many creases in it. And I use wet glue for this, Tombow. I put some on both sides. And then I work out what the middle is. So if I... Uh, how many have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, so we've got 10 of those, so it's 4, 5. That, where his bell is, looks as if it's absolutely halfway across the paper. So pop that underneath, and then that over the top. Just give it a couple of minutes to for the Tombow to um, grab hold of that. Okay. Eventually I'll remember to go back in once that's dry to remove the temporary um, adhesive that's in there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, um, turn over and repeat, that's fine. Now I'm going to do my card base and I've already measured halfway here and I'm going to use my one inch punch again to keep that little pencil line in the center and just cut out that must be about a third of a circle okay then close your card and then punch the other side just line it up and Do that one and then oh before we move on I'm going to decorate my cardstock and what I've done with this is I've decorated the front and the back because this will be given to somebody as a little toy or gift or whatever um, I wanted it to be patterned all over and the stamp that I'm using for that is this Christmas tree which is from the Peaceful Pines set this is the one I'm using and I'm using Pepperzaz ink this mark here I've put on here that is three quarters of an inch down and that's going to be my guide for where I do my oval on this one here I did it a little bit too far down, that's an inch down and that's why you can't really see his the top of his hat. So I'm just going to stamp this randomly I won't sit here and do all the um, snow on the trees that is really quite time consuming and uh, you don't want to watch that.
Obviously you could choose something else to do your pattern with if you wanted. I've got to try and decide what I can do with the first one I made because I didn't um, do this. So I'm going to have to find something that I can stamp in there carefully. I have to go for a really small design, I think. Once I've done it, if I have a chance, I'll put it on the blog the same day that I post this. Okay, so that's that. I'm going to bring up my Big Shot now so that I can cut my oval out. Move that over, move that over. Just clear the decks here a bit. And I will also cut out the glimmer paper as well. Right, move that off for a moment. Right, okay, that looks like a good position. So the, let's do it around that way, it's a lot easier. The um, ovals I'm using are from our ovals collection uh, frame knits and I'm using numbers four and five. I always start from the inside, smaller the die, smaller the number. So that's one, two, three, four. Did I say three and four? If I didn't, that's what I meant to say. Right, okay, so we're going to use the number three first of all. And remember that the cutting edge on these dies, these framelits, is actually on the inside edge. Um, I think that's a mistake that I made last time, which is why it's so high. So I need my pencil mark on the inside. Okay, I think that looks straight. It's not very easy to see these things. I mean, I struggle anyway, but to try and look at it sideways and decide whether it's straight or not, it's a real challenge for me. Okay, so there's that bit. Okay, so that will be saved for something. That one's okay. Now let's bring this back again. And this one. Put the small one on the inside. And then this one around the outside, trying to make sure that the gap between both of these is the same all the way round. Right, from where I'm sitting that looks okay. Right, then crank that through. oval which will be used for something and one oval frame. So I'll move that out of the way. Uh, what do we want to do next? I think if we prepare this with the sticky tape. Um, I've been using our tear and tape. Um, you can just tear the pieces but I still cut it because like a friend of mine who also makes videos um, she says that when she tears the tape she tears the paper with it and I have to say I tend to do that as well. So in the at the end of the day it's a lot better for me to cut it it saves me a lot of grief okay so that's all we need on that one right and this one we're going to score it needs to be folded in half and it's eight inches so we'll do four inches Uh, 
that. And just fold that in half. And use your bone folder to get a nice crease on that. Okay, so what we're going to do with this is we need to find halfway, which we know is going to be two inches. And we need to measure from either end, and for that one, um, doesn't look like I wrote it down, I must have done, uh, five eighths, right, okay, so that's the measurement we need, I think it was three eighths, if I could find my ruler big 12 inch ruler and it's always going walkabouts right okay well I'm going to do the 3 eighths I know that it's got to be around about here somewhere okay in fact it's up there that I need it not down here that's half an inch so that's about 3 eighths half an inch so that must be about 3 eighths okay so what I'm going to do is with my word window punch Oh, there's my ruler. Um, my I'm going to put this in. In fact, no, I'm going to do it a bit tighter. I've been working on this so much over the last two days. Um, you know, it really has been uh, my toughest assignment that I've done. I'm going to do this at five eighths. It's a lot better to do not enough and then go back and do a bit extra rather than cutting too much off and having to go back to the beginning again. Okay, so I've done, that's five eighths of an inch and that's five eighths of an inch. So with my word window punch, I'm going to make sure that that line goes against the curve in here and I want to punch less than half of this. Okay, so I can just about see my pencil line there and I'm making this as straight as I can. Just tip it up a little bit. Okay, see how thin that is? And now I'm going to go the other end and line my pencil mark up with this curve and I'm also lining up that cut line so that this comes across straight okay that's quite good right so if your pencil marks are still there just remove them I wonder can you hear that wind howling past my window outside, blowing a gale. Right, okay, so that's good. Now what's meant to be happening is this is going to be fitting over, okay, and as long as there's enough room in between those two, um, the ends of this punch out, for that to slide up and down. Now we've got to do something to stop the little um, lugs in there coming through here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tearing tape across here. As close to the top as possible. Some across there. I also need some down here. Again, as close to the bottom as possible. I will need some here to close this side up. And then on the back of the side that I've put all that tape, I need some more. And this is what's going to attach this part to the actual card base 
and I do one down either side and then I do one in the center as well. If you wanted to use fast fuse for this job you could but obviously this part you would have to wait and do it um, as we take the backing off this tape you would have to be doing yours. Right so that's going to be closing, that's going to be glued, that's going to be glued, then that goes in there, that's, yep, that's about it. Right, okay, so let's get the action going now. Ah, I told you I'd remember about this gluey bit. So there's my temporary glue there. And what you can do is you can use your um, adhesive remover to get rid of any excess there. Right, uh, so we're going to pop him there and then remove these What I thought I would do with mine is um, I'm going to put my grandchildren's names on them at the bottom. I'm going to use the uh, white glimmer paper, the Dazzling Diamonds glimmer paper and do with that. I'll, again I'll try and do that before I post the video so I can show them on my blog. Right, okay, so I'm now going to take the plunge and close this down. Now if I've done it correctly this is going to move up and down. Oh wow, there we go. And it's not going to be coming out. That's Oh, no, no, no. That's because I'm pulling too hard. That bit's okay. Just looking through the light. Oh, that's better. Yes, that's much better. Okay, now with this bit, one more job to be done is you need to punch a hole there and put some ribbon through it. And I use my cropper dial and I use the, uh, and this time I'm going to use a 1 8 hole. I normally use the 3 16 but I don't really think that that's necessary. Um, the ribbon I'm using is um, a retired ribbon. It's in it's an old colour called certainly celery, um, but it's certainly close enough uh, for this project. The thing is, by the time it's been pulled a few times, it's going to get a little bit grubby anyway. So, so just pop that through there. There we go. And I tie that just in a knot, double knot. That's one. That's two. And just give the ends a nice little tidy up. So that just makes it easier to pull and it will also stop this going too far down as well so you don't have to fight to get it back again. Okay, so now it's just a question of adhering this in here. So what I do is I have a look to see where I really would like him to go. I mean he's going to dictate to us actually but ideally I would like him to be about there but obviously that's not going to work. So what is going to work is to put that in straight so you've got the same green gap and the same green all the way down here 
Okay, he's a little bit off to the side, but that's all right. I don't think there's going to be any complaints about that. So the next thing to do is open it up that way. Memorise what kind of gap you've got here and where it is here. Take your... Otherwise you'll move it just like I have. And then remove the uh, sticky strips. Well and truly moved it now, haven't I? Never mind, we can sort that out. Okay, so just turn that over. Right, okay, memorised how this should look like. and then close this down. Okay, so there we go, that's all in position. Just check, make sure it's still okay. Okay, well that one's moving really nice and easily. Now just to close this up, take these two pieces And there we have it. Okay, at least he sits very nicely in here. Unlike this one, who, because I did it so low down, his hat is disappearing up the top. Not the end of the world, I know, but it's nicer if it looks like this. And then pull it up. And then down. Now, what child isn't going to be absolutely delighted with that? As you see, that one is much, much easier than this, and I'm not quite sure why. Not quite sure what I've done with that. Oh, that's, that's a lot better now. I think maybe I've put the adhesive too close to the edges. But there you go. Lovely project, and I really, really hope you decide to give it a try. Let's leave one of these open. Oh, I've moved that. That's better. Oh, I see what I've done. I've hooked it out the side there. That's better. All right. Anyway, many thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, please ask me. I'm always very, very happy to help. If you've enjoyed my video, please um, subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button, which is probably on the right hand side of the screen or that may be underneath. If you'd like to purchase any of the products that I featured here um, please click on the 24-7 link that's showing at the bottom of the screen and that will take you straight to my 24-7 online stamping up shop. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio!